going on, guys? This is Kyle Carroll at MyMMANews.com. Joined by Kelly Boyle, who will be fighting on Jackhammer Promotions on April 28th. Yes. Uh, Kelly, thanks for joining. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your fight coming off at Jackhammer. Okay, uh, well, it's my second fight. Um, I'm very, very excited. I was originally supposed to be fighting um, yesterday, <laughs> March 22nd, on um, the Top Cake promotion, but unfortunately that event uh, didn't end up happening, so very, very excited to be included. Kind of last minute that we were able to make that happen, that I was able to jump in there for the Jackhammer, and I'm just, I'm so excited to get back in there. I just, I, I'm very new in my fight career, so I'm hopeful to see what I can do. You said this is your second fight. Mm -hmm. What kind of expectations do you have going into this? I know you put, you're put putting in some pretty uh, mm -hmm. good camps, working hard and training. Uh, tell us what you expect from yourself inside this fight. Uh, well, I'm definitely, you know, kind of walking in there with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I did <laughs> lose the first one, but uh, so, but I'm the difference in this camp from the first one is that I mean, obviously, I have a little, a little experience under my belt. The first one, I didn't know really what was coming, so I. In terms of expectations, I'm ready to trust my training more. Not that I did it beforehand, yeah. but um, being a little more confident and knowing that I'm I'm able to get in there and, and do you know everything that Rick Schaefer has taught me and, and is continuing to teach me. I still have a long way to go in terms of everything I can learn from him and, and all the guys down at No Limits. They're incredible down there, so it's definitely been, been fun keeping up with them and, and, and putting in some work. So I'm excited to see what to put that all to the test, really. Tell, tell us how you got into it and uh, why you started fighting. Okay. Um, well, I originally started kickboxing with no intention of fighting. <laughs> it started as, as a lot more of a weight loss thing. I was an athlete my entire life. Um, I started rowing when I was about 13 or 14. So I did that for almost, almost 10 years. And then once my college athletic career had come to a, uh, an end, I had never learned like the nutrition side of it. So as far as I knew, so as a little kid, you know, I was just burning everything off. So I never learned how to like feel my body correctly. So once my athletic career was done, I had actually put on a hundred pounds and I wanted to get that off immediately <laughs> as fast as I could. So I, went, I was just like, I went to like the rec when I was in, in college. I was like, oh, I had a kickboxing class, like a cardio kind of class. I was like, oh, I'll jump in. It was fun. And it was, I, I liked it. I was, you know, there were no bags. It was just strictly cardio. And then when I moved back home to Long Island, I was on Groupon and found I Love Kickboxing. And I was like, all right, this is cool. I'll try that. And I was there for about a year, I would say. And then um, a good friend of mine who I worked with and is my best friend, still work with him, uh, Trevor, he was training a bomb down at the time and, and more jiu-jitsu than, than striking. And I was like, okay, well, I want to learn more about the sport. I, I got the cardio, I'm losing weight, but now I actually, I guess it was the natural progression as like an athlete that I wanted to learn more about the actual sport of kickboxing. So I went down to Vamos, started training there, loved it, absolutely loved it. Didn't think I'd ever fight, but I was like, oh, this is cool. And then everybody that was um, that was training there, they had their first fight coming up, or you know, had, while I had been there, they were going into their first fight. And uh, and the second that I went to that fight, I had never been to any kind of event like that. And I went and I was watching and I was like, okay, I, I gotta get in there. This is <laughs> this is cool. This is awesome. So the next time they had a fight coming up and they asked me, I was I jumped at the opportunity. So I jumped into training and, and now I'm not looking back. <laughs> yeah, there really is no atmosphere like the fight scene. Right. When you go in there, the crowd's nuts. It yeah. just stays loud. And yeah. There really is nothing like that captivating. And, yeah. Uh, when you first started training though, was this kind of like, so you start going, you're like, oh man, this is brutal. It was definitely brutal for sure. But I think what made me so comfortable with like sparring and, and getting into it that way was because it was slow at first mm -hmm. and um, I was the only girl taking those classes down um, when I first started training and I understand that like guys might feel weird about mm -hmm. hitting a girl <laughs> it makes sense it's, it's like politically incorrect <laughs> I get it but so like after a while it's like okay if I like I want to spar, like, you gotta hit me. So, like, after a while, it was like, hit me. <laughs> so, that like, kind of natural progression made me more comfortable with it. So, by the, you know, by the point that I was like literally begging for it, they had to actually get like hard, hard sparring in. Um, that's what, you know, made me really love it. And it was just like, 
I was comfortable with it at that point. So it wasn't like, you know, I was going in there and just getting beat up left and right. It was a natural progression that I kind of got into the sport comfortably, I guess. And, and then you, you mentioned earlier, you put on weight and now you like, mm -hmm. you knocked a lot of it off. Yeah. Um, how does it feel though, now that you accomplished that? Like, gain the weight, like I, I've always been a battle in the weight situation. Right, right. I understand that struggle. Yeah. How does it feel to like, tackle most of it it's nuts i mean when i first decided that i was gonna fight i was at about 180 ish i think and when i was rowing competitively i was like sitting between like 140 150 like i would fluctuate that was like You're the best tough. yeah and that was like the best shape that i had ever been in so um when i decided i was gonna fight i picked 150 as the weight class and i was like okay that's gonna be the 100 pound marker mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna shoot for that but now that i've been uh even since making weight for the first fight I've been I haven't strayed too far from it because I mean it wasn't just like I had never had any sort of experience but, you know like wrestlers they're like very familiar with like cutting weight and mm -hmm. stuff like that so I never had a deadline for that but then that was a weight that I wanted to stay at throughout my life so it wasn't like I'm just dropping for this fight mm -hmm. and then coming back up you know so it's been it's, I mean it feels great <laughs> now that I'm down at the That's awesome, yeah. that I want to be at thank you thank you a uh, little bit lower for this next one and even it's interesting because I thought once I hit this weight I was like okay I'm gonna be good like this is fine mm -hmm. this is the weight I want to be at but now that I'm back to being an athlete again and feeling stronger I'm like I could I could change my body composition more like I could probably yeah, more lose muscle. more more muscle yeah, yeah if the number stays the same I can build more muscle and like so it's not just about a number for me anymore which is unexpected and then again when I had put on 100 pounds I didn't expect to be fighting in a year and a half so <laughs> So it's been it's been very cool to see new doors and new windows and opportunities mm -hmm. kind of come about from that. So, so what cool. are your short term and long term goals within fighting? Short term, win this next one, <laughs> definitely. Um, long term, I would love, love, love to get into MMA down the road at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm still very new to you mm -hmm. know ground game stuff. You know, uh, training down at Freedom, the guys are awesome down there. Very, very new. Only my my second day in wrestling, but I love it so far. So we'll see, but. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see what other opportunities would open up. I mean, I'm training hard. I have no intentions of stopping. So we'll just see see what, what makes itself available cool. to me. Now, yeah. within the fight itself, mm -hmm. uh, what is the biggest... I don't know how well you know your opponent, because mm -hmm. amateur obviously don't know the opponent right. as well. Um, what are the biggest challenges you think she poses to you? That she poses to me? Well, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about okay. her. I know it's also her first fight. Okay. Um, so, in terms of challenges, I, I'm not trying to think as much about her. I'm trying to take so away. Okay. No, I was going to say, I'll, I guess rephrase it then to right. um, is there more, anything you want to accomplish within the fight, like footwork, certain strikes, anything like that, head movement? Yeah, well, definitely more confidence in my combos. I mean, um, and just trying to take a, a, everything from the first fight and opportunities that were there that I may have missed and now just not having that experience of, I mean like sparring is one thing mm -hmm. but you know someone actually trying to take your head off is different thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just learning from those experiences of you know oh, I could have done that there or when I saw that I hurt her and that in that one combo I should capitalize on that you know just learning how to make everything work in my favor and not just looking for clean shots you know mm -hmm. so just t making it a very big learning experience for the first one and seeing how how much i've changed and just putting it all to this i know i saw the video you posted last night on instagram mm -hmm. hitting the bag is that yeah. last night would have been the fight right um you were, you were beating the hell out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. what, is, what, is, what does it feel like when you enter that ring do you get the jitters is it nervous i you What's know your mentality it's entering? It's interesting because I, when I was a rower, I mean, rowing is not a contact sport by any means, no. not even a little bit. <laughs> it is the both. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but I would get more nervous for races than I did for that first fight. Okay. Like I didn't feel, maybe because I didn't have that experience in my head yet, that it was mm -hmm. such a totally new thing to me that I didn't really know. I didn't have anything to be nervous about because I didn't know what was coming. Um, but I, I was very pleasantly surprised at how comfortable I felt in the ring. Obviously, it didn't go my way, which is, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But I was I was happy in there. Like, I loved every second of it. Like, awesome. I just, I loved trading back and forth. I loved going for it. It was just, it was fun. And I, the second that it was over, I wanted to get right back into the next <laughs> one. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one, especially this promotion. I mean, I've been to so 
many jackhammer fights. I've had so many friends, teammates, mm -hmm. um, my coach. I've seen everybody fight there, and even every time I watch the fights, I'm like, okay, can I? You guys got time? Can I? Can I hop in there? <laughs> so. I'm excited. It's going to be good. Uh, I believe you have other teammates fighting on the Jack Hammer card too, yes. right? Yes. Yes, Giancarlo, he's fighting as well. Very excited that, that we've got at least two of us now hopping in. We've got a very busy April for No Limits Kickboxing, for sure. Yeah, we've got Kareem and Sergio with Triton um, on April 12th. Rick, Misa, Pat, Andre, everybody's fighting um, Madison Square Garden on the 20th. And then Which maybe, should be a great one. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. Yeah. And... Uh, Said I can't party with him after. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but, uh, you gotta go straight home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, and then and then the next week is me and G, so it'll be good. Awesome. Yeah, definitely yeah. busy. So talking about busy April, uh, what's the fight camp? Go what's it like at Hill? It's it's right like now? nothing I've ever experienced, but I absolutely love it. I mean, I've just I've never. I always worked like when I was rowing, I always felt like I was working hard, and I felt mm -hmm. dead after every practice. But I feel. I mean, not to make the pun, but like pushing past those limits at the limits. <laughs> but uh, he's, they're going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> you can edit that one out. <laughs> but uh, I feel like I'm, I'm pushing, I'm trusting myself to keep going. Because, you know, when in past athletic experiences, like I would get in my head of like, this sucks, I'm tired, I want to stop. But maybe it's just because it's fighting now, but it's like, if I stop, that's not going to go well for me. So it's just, I mean, and also when you're in a gym with Rick Schaefer, Pat Carroll, Kareem, these guys that are so talented, they've just got the experience and it's just, it's intimidating at times, but I'm not going to stop when I'm, when I'm training with those guys. Like, no. Just absorb it all. Yeah. Like take every single second as, as a learning experience. I mean, some days are definitely harder than others, but every, no matter, no matter what, like whenever I leave there, I feel like I've, I've, developed that much more which is good so even on hard days when i feel like i really got my you know my butt kicked it's always good awesome yeah awesome and um so now you got this fight coming up uh do you want to be as active as possible like i know you said you want to get right back in there but mm -hmm. how many fights do you want to have in a year oh i'm not sure i'm not sure i haven't really thought long term in, in terms of you know quantity of mm -hmm. fights i've really been just trying to take things one step at a time and and, and this beginning of my fight career more so about learning as much as I can and developing as much as I can and then once I feel like I've developed a good pace in terms of you know like trusting my body more learning more about weight cutting and, and, and how to go about a fight camp correctly that kind of stuff like that I mean everything's going really well right now which I'm excited about uh, but you know whatever honestly whatever my coaches recommend they think I should get back in there and you know a month, cool, I'll do that. <laughs> if six months, cool, I'll do that too. Whatever. Awesome, awesome. And yeah. uh, oh, what do you do for fun when you're not training? You're, because I see you, you're in there a lot, you're working, you're, you're always keeping busy. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say because even my my job is kickboxing too. Because I, I manage um, the Isle of Kickboxing, not in Lake Grove, but uh, I don't know, in my former life before kickboxing, I guess you could say. I was definitely into like music festivals, raver through and through in my heart forever. Raver, you know, oh, low yes. sticks flying to the oh, air. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I used to even work in that music industry. I okay. used to I used to do uh, media coverage. Wow. Uh, I used to work for YourEDM.com, so oh, I work right. at Ultra Miami Music Week, which I'm very, very sad that I'm missing this year. But it's for a good cause, <laughs> fight, so it makes sense. Can't be partying in Miami for a week, you know, when I'm five <laughs> weeks out from a fight. But um, yeah, no, I, I music is my my, my escape from that stuff. And not even just like, you know, going home and you know, throwing headphones on, but like going to shows, going to festivals, that kind of thing. That's Do my... you have a favorite band or a genre mm -hmm. that sounds to be the uh, like, um, well, rave-type music? Well, when it comes to electronic music, what got me into it initially was Swedish House Mafia. So they are okay. my absolute fave. But I mean, it's having worked in that industry, there's so many different little subgenres that, mm -hmm. you know, I could talk all day about an artists that sound completely different from each other so I wouldn't even say that it's just you know like EDM like, <laughs> like there's you know house music I love some techno I get I get it's a little bit of everything so that's my my big escape that and Alabama football of course Alabama football roll tide yes yeah so when it's not the fall I don't know what to do with myself it's either going to raves or watching game day that's about it that sounds like two great options <laughs> great though. options yes yeah, so I'm getting my steps in no matter what <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so uh, you got the fight coming up. Yes. Um, what, what do you, 
I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. Is this in the way, by the way? No, no, you're not. fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> Suck it down for a little bit. Um, I just realized I hope the straw wasn't like directly in line with it. <laughs> That's all I see. <laughs> it's on just the a tape. green blur the entire time. Oh, <laughs> uh, so so you're gonna be fighting Jack Hammer. Yes. Um, is there anything that uh, really pulled from this, like lifestyle-wise? You talking about you used to work in the music industry, yeah. now you're managing a kickboxing. Like, has, it's really become like a lifestyle. For you. Is that kind yeah. of like the direction you expected? Definitely not expected, but I'm so happy that it's gone this way. I mean, there are so many things that have gone not according to plan, and I would even go as far as saying going wrong in my life that um, sucked while I was going through those things, but if none of those things happened, it never would have led me to where I am now, so I'm thankful for all those experiences. Um, I would say I am like music and working in, in dance music and that kind of experience was um, very emotionally healing for me and it gave me a lot of you know mental um, fit mental and emotional growth I guess you could say because I mean I feel like electronic music is it gives that experience to a, a certain pocket of people I feel like it's very like a lot of emotional connection to ravers um, yeah so I think that was a good experience for me and then just you know recovering my body with the weight loss with kickboxing and it's just it's like totally turned my life around I mean, like I was a rower for so long but once I got to college I mean I wasn't I was by no means top dog I mean I'm five six I'm short for a girl for rowing I mean the girls are super tall and I definitely wasn't the fastest um, and even like academically like I was I was a good student in high school and part of college <laughs> but um, but yeah I mean I've had a lot of people in my life tell me that you know I'm I'm not gonna gonna really go anywhere like I've even had coaches in the past when I was rowing tell me that you know I was a mediocre athlete and wasn't really gonna go anywhere past high school and here I am fighting <laughs> so it's been it's been a big turnaround, a lot of different experiences, but I'm thankful for everything because it's taught me a lot. Um, I, I'm a lot. I cherish like the training that I have now. It's very important to me because mm -hmm. it's not just like, oh, something I get to do. Like it's important, you know. Like I, I wouldn't be feeling the way I do. I wouldn't carry myself the way I do now without it. So it's it's been really really helpful in so many different ways. And you mentioned earlier you're the only female down at the gym. Mm -hmm. um, you, then you have a friend, Chrissy, yeah. who trains at a Long Island MMA. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you guys cross-train a lot of times together. What is it like in having a, another female like her to train with? And how often do you go to other gyms to work with other women? Well, she she is awesome. She's actually the first girl that I ever sparred with. Okay. Yeah, we went down to um, down to AFC with uh, Tommy Batone and, and, and all those mm -hmm. guys. And it, I think it was her first sparring after her uh, most recent injury and I think it, that's what that was when she decided that she was going to start training to start fighting again. So this past yeah. one that she just fought out. Uh, yes, I think so. I think that was the first one since. Yeah, like three years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was the first girl she had sparred, or first anyone, she, I'm not sure if it was first anyone or first girl that she had sparred with since then, but she was the first girl I ever sparred with. And um, like I had, had, had fun sparring with, you know, the guys where I was training mm -hmm. at the time and, and it was good, but with her, it was different because it was like we were trusting each other more to like, okay, we're in, we're in the ring, we're gonna do this. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like, okay, this is a girl, I don't want to you know, go too hard. Each like other. we were on leash. Each other. I mean, she beat me the hell up, but <laughs> she kicked me in the face pretty damn hard. <laughs> but I mean, I got out of that ring knowing that I was like, okay, this is this is what I want to do. This is this is legit. And she, and with all of her experience, and you know, the people that she knows, and just like the, um, what she's talked me through and you know just gotten me into a good mindset about fighting and that kind of stuff and and having her as someone that I can talk to you know as the only girl at my gym like and now I have somebody else that I can kind of confide in and talk about girl stuff still <laughs> <laughs> that's it's gonna understand mm -hmm. you know because a guy in training camp might be very mentally different from a girl in training camp. Like, I know I am the most dramatic human being as it is in life. So when I'm hungry, <laughs> it's very different. I mean, ugh. everyone that helped me through my first camp, they are, should be nominated for sainthood because <laughs> I was just obnoxiously dramatic. But, I mean, I'm very, very happy to have someone there. And uh, she's invited me down a couple times. We actually have <laughs> at... Um, 4.30 in the morning, down to South Shore MMA every okay. Friday. Oh, yeah, just girls sparring. 
it was great. 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning. 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 Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, we're all insane, so it's fine. <laughs> but it's great. We get a couple rounds and start the day right, and then go about our day and do whatever. So Awesome. It's good. It's good to get around, and it's just... There's a couple girls. I think uh, Meg Carney is going to come back down. Uh, come down as well. She, Chrissy, and I are all fighting on the same card in, uh, okay. for Jack Hammer. So, so that'll be good. It's actually interesting. Um, myself, Meg, and Chrissy, whether now or in the past, all worked at the same cardio studio. Oh, yeah. Right. So, a bunch of uh, <laughs> ILKB girls going rogue, <laughs> getting in the ring. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, it's good. It's good. We get some some rounds in, which is always fun. Awesome, awesome, and uh, oh, tell us a little bit about what inspires you, motivates you. Obviously, you're passionate about this. It's something you love. You you work kickboxing now. You're training full time. Yeah. Um, what inspires you? Who, who are some people that inspire you? Oh, who inspires me? Wow, a lot of people inspire me. It's a very hard question to answer. <laughs> um, well, I guess just to start with, you know, have the inspiration like from like within. I guess you could say. I mean, it's just, it's empowering. Like, I feel like I, through most of my life, never really felt, like, very strong. I was very, like, sheepish, shy person. And um, this really helped me learn a lot about myself and develop who I am as a person. Like, I walk around and I carry myself very differently from the person that I was maybe even as soon as two years ago. Um, Weight-wise, of course, but, like, just my confidence. Mm -hmm. It's just built so much. And, um whether physically or you know just interactions with people like I don't like I don't take crap from people that I that I may have taken that from mm-hmm. you know a couple of years ago so that that keeps me going too because I know that it's it's coming from this okay. and just believing in myself a little bit more um, but in terms of other people that inspire me Chrissy is a huge one for sure um, and I've told her that all the time she's like stop <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's everyone that I train with I mean I, I want to make them proud I want to I want to keep up with them it's just they're they're all so talented and, and it's just it's incredible to watch them do what they do and I want to be I want to earn my spot with them you know definitely definitely yeah. um, speaking of that inspiring what kind of support system do you have what were your parents thought the first time you told them hey I'm gonna step in a ring and get punched in the face yeah uh, it's now at this point I think I have more support from my from my friends my family doing a sport like this than I did when I was like rowing and doing so I mean they always supported me like my parents have always been super super supportive it's a different type of support it's a different type of support like um I don't know I mean when I first told my mom my one of my grandmas still doesn't know (laughs) she's afraid I even have like a fight under my belt and she still doesn't know that I'm even training like this but that's fine well we don't have to tell her so she won't (laughs) listen to this (laughs) mail her a copy of this (laughs) Um, but yeah, they were surprised at first. I mean, they were cool with me, like, just getting into training and stuff yeah, like that. Was... And then I remember I came home one day and I was like, I think I want to fight. And my mom was like, what? <laughs> my mom was just like, it was just a very foreign concept to her at first. My dad, it took him a, a while to come around to it. I mean, it was, hey, no one wants girl. to see their little girl get, yeah. you know, kicked in the face <laughs> by Chrissy. <laughs> She's diving in the ring to protect you. Right. Um... And they, they've definitely come around to it. They think it's pretty cool. My, my grandpa didn't want to know. He didn't want to know. Like, we, we didn't tell him until after the first fight. We showed him the videos. And he was like, okay. He's like, is she training with, with men? Are men hitting her? <laughs> I was like, it's okay, Papa. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, they, they've kind of come around to it. My dad is not excited if I go into MMA, though. He's like... Why, cause, cause, why the difference, though? What, MMA versus kickboxing? I don't know. Well, my, my family is like... That was like fighting was was never something that was like involved in my mm-hmm. family or anything like that. Like never like no one like wrestled or anything like yeah. that. Um, or just rowers. <laughs> Whole family rowers. <laughs> no, I, well, I mean like water sports, like sailing, yeah. rowing, swimming, that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't know. That was that's an interesting thing. I guess it's just because he sees how like the only. Um, all the association, of blood and yeah. The only association he has to it is like UFC mm-hmm. and like seeing, you know, like cyborg. <laughs> so he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> seeing that but, creature uh, just coming right, out. Right, right, right. I mean, she's my hero. She's awesome. I was heartbroken when I saw her lose, but it's okay. I like Amanda too. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it's definitely taking them a little bit more coaxing. 
to get no. them towards them. I mean, they would never stop me from doing it. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, I I love my parents so much. They're they're just they're very supportive in the sense that they'll let me go for anything that I want to go for. They might be skeptical of it, and being like, why are you climbing into a cage to fight somebody? That's, that's like a very foreign concept to them, but they'll always be very supportive of it, which I appreciate, because I know not everybody has that, and I, and I know I'm very lucky in that. I mean, not even just fighting. I mean, I know not everybody has you know, generally supportive families, so I'm very, very appreciative to have them. No pun intended again, but in my corner. <laughs> um, now, I saw you put uh, show sold out. Uh, you, you sold all your tickets, I assume? I, I sold most of my tickets. Okay. but uh, do, you, okay. do you have any left? That I, have anyone a, I have a couple purchase? left. I have, do have uh, a couple of GAs left. I'm hoping to see if I can maybe get some more because I didn't expect to sell that many that fast, <laughs> and especially this close to it. Uh, but yeah, lots of friends, lots of family. I mean, that's that's another perk of working at a cardio studio. They all want to come. So. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> which, uh, which is nice. I mean, I, I love seeing all their faces, so it's cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty sweet. Um, uh, do you have any sponsors or anything like that? No that sponsors. No? I'm, still, I'm still a baby in, in <laughs> kickboxing and fighting. So, I uh, I mean, I was saying, hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> but, I mean, you know, whenever that opportunity presents itself I'll definitely always want to look into something like that mm -hmm. but no one's you know I haven't really looked into that quite yet right now I'm just focusing on fo fo focusing on just fighting just okay. figuring that out I want to get in there because I want to get in there that's okay. really what it's more more important to me now I asked this question the other night to uh, Sophia Mirabella okay. I don't know if you know who she is young girl and she was saying I was in the fighting right. fighting on um, eight, uh, the 20th actually okay cool and She's 16, so I was asking, what is your thought about like CTE? You hear a lot about football. Yeah. Um, they're wearing helmets, but they're colliding 24-7. Yeah. But you don't really hear a whole lot about an MMA or boxing or kickboxing. Right. I know a little bit you heard about it very briefly right after it came out in the NFL yeah. reports with UFC, Dana White, and them donated money, kind of squashed the whole thing in the right. MMA, and you didn't really hear much else. But yeah. Is that ever a concern for you, though? Like, you're, because you're very fresh into the sport. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think about it a lot, you know, when I'm training. I mean, sometimes it's like, it's more so the only time it really crosses my mind is if, like, I see a headline about it or something like that, you know, because I'm trusting my my, my training and my mm -hmm. training partners and my coaches, you know, that we're not trying to kill each other every mm -hmm. night at training. But, I mean, I know it is a very, a real risk when you are getting in the ring and that kind of thing. So, I mean, it's important to... To really put in the work when it comes to defense, defense, defense. <laughs> Apparently, my words are starting to slip for today. I've been up. For it too this long. doesn't help your cause. No, for CTE. not even, a, not even a little bit. So, <laughs> so words. What are they? Um, but yeah, I mean, trusting my journey when it comes mm -hmm. to defense and 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 uh, and developing that as much as I can. I mean, yes, I'm trying to. I mean, but at the end of the day, you're trying to do that to the other person. Yeah. But. Also, you have a willing opponent. I mean, everybody's stepping in there knowing the risk and knowing what could potentially mm -hmm. happen, and you want to do it anyway, so. Okay. So it's almost like you, you believe the passion is worth the risk. Yeah. I mean, and also, I guess, in terms of, you know, having a fight career, I mean, knowing when, when it's too much or maybe when too much damage has been done, I mean, mm -hmm. definitely checking up on things and making sure that everything's functioning mm -hmm. properly, I guess, I mean, you Everyone should know what their their end game is. Their, Does it kind of help you though, like in the back of your mind, that you know fighters are always getting physicals and examined oh, yeah. before, and after fights, and then before, like a couple months before, so you get like your blood work. Right. Does that help you? Yeah. In a sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, it shows the effort of making sure everybody's healthy enough to get in there in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you don't want to have somebody that's you know, hanging on by a thread hopping in there. You know, which is like <laughs> yeah. it's not good. No. So. You know, I think, I mean, again, I, I'm still so new to it that I, you know, procedures and stuff like that and, like, how things are, you know, examined and gone about. Because I'm sure you heard the term punch drunk, right? Yeah. Because you see a lot of guys like Freddie Roach is a great example, Muhammad Ali, Parkinson's, and I... I yeah. I don't think there's any studies out there that directly correlate uh -huh. to, but I don't know how it couldn't can right, have a yeah. connection. Yeah. Just uh, my personal belief, but um, so that's something that all right, it's just something yeah. that kind of just yeah. I mean, you know it's when, there. But. Yeah, it's it, there. It's yeah, you know it's there, but it's 
part of the game. Mm -hmm. So knowing when to stop, knowing when something's wrong, and admitting that to yourself, I think that's that's a key part of it. Well, know? I guess a good question would be, being that you're a manager at like a kickboxing mm -hmm. place, um, I'm sure certifications and all that are right. required, right? Right, you right, know, right. Concussion protocol and yeah. all that stuff. So it's training you have to go through. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, I think the most important part is just knowing your body and knowing and not being in denial about injuries and things like that. And that, you know, beyond you know head stuff. You know, if you're hurting that day, you know, like this morning, like my elbow was killing me. So, you know, I. Beat the <laughs> So, you know, I was trying to strengthen up everything, you know, everything on the other side, and working on that. So, knowing when you should push through things and when you shouldn't. Finding balance and staying conscious of that, I think, is very, very important. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's one thing about you that nobody knows but you'd like to share with everyone? Ooh. Oh, man. That is a good question. Like, training wise, fighting wise? Anything. Or? I've, I've had black belts in Jiu Jitsu, can't ride a bike. I've had okay. Oh, I got some for you. Uh, fighter this morning told me she's afraid of a phobia of sponges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as much of an athlete I've been most of my life, I always wanted to play softball and I always wanted to play volleyball. Like those are two things that I loved. Like my family's a huge baseball family. Okay. Uh, Yankees all the way. Like you know, craziness. I in middle school when you know like when everybody makes a team, I got <laughs> cut both years oh, from softball and volleyball so every sport that I tried out for I got cut from so which eventually led me to rowing but yeah so I sucked as an athlete when I was a little kid I was way more into like show tunes and watching Broadway and listening to 50s music with my mom <laughs> Elvis is just blast. Yeah, yeah, like a Barbara Streisand movie is my favorite movie of all time, so. <laughs> I'm just an old woman. <laughs> are you an only child? Or are you yes. have siblings? Only child. Only child, only child yeah. with tons of cousins. Tons of cousins. On okay. both sides. My my dad's side, um, all of my aunts and um, and my family, we all grew up like within two or three blocks of each other. So all those kids, like we were always at each other's houses. So it felt like I had siblings. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why I don't feel like I'm an only child like some people like okay. anticipate what an only child I don't even know what is an only child supposed to be like they're like you don't seem like an only child okay I don't know what that means <laughs> I'm one of five so okay was, but it's like um, at the same time though I don't know how you pick someone that's an only yeah. child I guess maybe when you're younger yeah, but I, guess so. I don't know yeah, I mean, I was by no means spoiled. Yeah, so. Like, people, I guess people anticipate that, like, only children are spoiled. Yeah, they, they get all the cookies. Yeah, no, I didn't. No, I had to find my dad for the cookies. My dad was eating the cookies. <laughs> he still eats. Oh, and, like, after my first fight, like, I was so excited to eat, like, real human food again and, like, whatever I wanted. So I, like, bought a bunch of stuff and, like, my dad ate it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll just get it out of the back fridge. in camp again. <laughs> yeah, thanks. He ate my meal prep once, too, which is also upsetting, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I was like, why did you opt for that? Like, you went for the chicken and It veggies. must have looked good, huh? I apparently am a good cook, so. <laughs> so you do a lot of meal prep for, yeah. when you train. How much does that help? It helps a lot. I mean, I had a very good friend of mine at the time um, helping me a lot with, you know, I, like I like I said earlier, I didn't I don't really know a lot about nutrition in terms of like weighing food, how much my body type should be having, how many meals a day. I don't know. I'm just like broccoli, cool. It's healthy. It's green, great. I'll eat that. But <laughs> um, a friend who is a nutritionist, he actually put me gave me this whole plan of what to eat for every single meal, and it wasn't. I didn't feel like I was killing myself for it. So I'm I'm not as uh, I don't dread it as much when I have to really start cutting weight. But, uh, but then again, I haven't dropped as much for a fight. Like I've kind of hung around where uh, what I fight at. So I don't. I mean, in the future, maybe I'll drop to a lower weight class since I know this is attainable. Maybe you know try for a lower one. We'll see. But uh, but I, I like meal prepping. I, I like okay. it. Yeah, it was a big part of my weight loss in general. So it wasn't too big of a shift mm -hmm. to try and figure out you know how to efficiently cut the weight, but leave the deadline. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that's definitely something like think about years ago MMA fighters or just, just fighters in general yeah. meal prep really wasn't like a huge thing mm. you hear them drinking beers before they go and <laughs> fight and now like now they're just, like really transforming to be like real athletes yeah. in the sense of your meal prepping you're taking supplements you're taking yeah. all this it's become like meal prepping is like it's own industry now I mean now you see all yeah. these companies popping up all over the place they're like hey you want your meal prep we'll make it we'll mail, mail it to your house or whatever 
um, it's become like this explosion of like you know now so many yeah, restaurants are doing it too. It, there's demand yeah. for it, yeah. Um, but I like learning about it myself and like making it. I mean, it's you know a pain sometimes to devote an entire Sunday after you know training in the morning. Because yeah, there's a lot of meals you're. There's a lot of meals. Well, you do do all three meals of the day, perhaps. So I do. I'll make a huge batch of everything, and then I'll just do, um, I do usually two eggs in the morning. When I'm in camp, I'll do two eggs in the morning and a liter of water. And then um, my meals for the rest of the day is three ounces of protein. Usually it's chicken. And then um, depending on how far out I am, I'll usually start at like two thirds or a half a cup of white rice and then whatever veggies. And then if I need to cut the rice a little bit lo lower, then I'll do that as I get closer. But, uh, but you know, I'll, I'll just, it's not bad. It's not. It's not like it's torture in the past. And I know that. I mean, I feel like people are gonna watch that and be like, because <laughs> I know people go through a lot for cutting weight. So, uh, so I'm gonna kind of putting my foot in my mouth already. But, uh, but, but it's it's a new experience to me. So, it, yeah. you know, I mean, I've just heard like horror stories from people in the past. And I guess because I kind of kept myself at like that was my goal weight in general. It was a different experience. Like it's All not right. like I walk around at a very different weight. Yeah, so, you're inflating. And right, deflating. right, 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 right. So I'm thankful for that. So guys, don't hate me. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, cool. cool. Uh, anyone you want to recognize or give shout-outs to, or anyone? Oh, Thanks. how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to everybody. I mean, everyone that I train with. Rick has been has been incredible I mean even just like the first time that I trained with him one-on-one -on -one, like I already felt like a different fighter it was just there's just so much insight that he gives and, and it's I understand so much more training with him and then everybody at No Limits that, that pushes me I mean um and kept me accountable as, as much as they can, you know, short of, you know, coming to my house and dragging me out to training. I mean, Kareem has is that great. Had to happen? No, 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 it hasn't had to happen. <laughs> um, Kareem is great. Sergio, he's the best. He, he's one of the people that dealt with my dramatics through my first, my first fight. He's not, and I'm happy to have him and Rick in my corner as well. And, you know, everybody, Misa, they're all great. Pat Carroll, they're just a bunch of awesome dudes that I aspire to be as talented as one day. So I'm very thankful for that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate taking the time and yeah, thank you. chatting it up about your fight coming yeah, up. Any predictions yeah. for the fight? Well, hopefully it's going to be, be my way this time. <laughs> but um, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to. Any, wanna... any words towards your opponent? You want to trash talk at all? That don't seem nah, to be style. Yeah, it's not my you style. You seem too sweet for that. I got to, yeah. I mean, I got to get, get some wins in the books before I start talking trash, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. Humble. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited to get in there. And I'm sure she is too. And it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you fight. Thank you. I'll be there ringside. So awesome. Love it. Best of luck. <laughs> Thank you so much.